Ginny Thomas, the uh, wife of corrupt judicial king Clarence Thomas, is back in the news for awful reasons as always. So she's now praised a group that wants to make sure that the SCOTUS stays as corrupt as it's apparently been for literally decades. I wonder why she would want them to still be corrupt. Methinks Ginny Thomas likes mega yacht cruises. But anyway, she expressed her appreciation in an email sent to Kelly Shackelford, who runs the First Liberty Institute. So this is a very well funded organization that describes itself as quote, the largest legal organization in the nation dedicated exclusively to defending religious liberty for all Americans. Which I think is a great way to brand yourself to cover for the fact that that's not at all what you do. This ain't about liberty, certainly not for non Christians. This is about making making sure that the Supreme Court protects the interests of the uber wealthy and can be bought off to make sure that they continue doing that. A storm is tearing up the digital media industry. Only our audience can save us in these difficult times. Help us reach our goal of 100,000 new members at tyt.com slash team. Shackelford actually read the email that Ginny Thomas sent her on a 31st July private call with the group's top donors. Here's a little bit of that. I got a I got an email today from Jenny Thomas, Justice Thomas's wife. So I want to read that to you. Is Cassie was in a meeting, I think earlier today with her, and she knew we were working on this, and so she said, "Great to meet through the meetings today. I cannot adequately express enough appreciation for you guys pulling." into reacting to the Biden effort on the Supreme Court. Many were so depressed at the lack of response by ours and conservatives, as too many seem to rely on one local lawyer in DC, who's a great individual, but is just one person for battling in the public square. And then this is in all caps, you guys have filled the sails of many judges. Can I just tell you, thank, and this is all caps, thank you so, so, so much. Build the sails of many judges. Uh, I mean, I think she's more concerned with the pockets of the judges being filled, but the sails do deserve to be filled as well. So she's a huge fan of this group. Well, why don't we play a little bit more of uh, Shackelford talking about what the group has gotten up to, what they're actually really about? It reminded me of the seals. Uh, when the seals know how to fight, but they can't fight in court. And when we came to them, uh, they were so appreciative because we were doing something for them that they couldn't do. And these judges are that same thing. They can't go out into the political sphere and fight. Uh, and they know they're trying to protect the existence of the court. And so it's neat that, you know, you know, those of you on the call are a part of protecting the future of our court. So let me give you a little bit more about that. So on that same call, Shackelford goes on to attack Justice Elena Kagan as both treasonous and disloyal. Which, oh my God, those are big charges. What did Elena Kagan do? Uh, Elena Kagan endorsed an enforcement mechanism for the court's newly adopted ethics code in a public appearance. Shackelford said that such an ethics code would destroy the independence of the judiciary. And I want I want you to stop and think about that for a second. So Elena Kagan said. We just adopted a new ethics code, okay? Remember that happened. So there's all this reporting about decades of corruption on the Supreme Court, where a lot of them were taking money, but Clarence Thomas especially took literally millions of dollars. And so they have this ethics code to tell all of us peasants, well, now it's different. It's it, we're, we're holding ourselves to a higher standard. And Justice Elena Kagan said, hey, um, maybe we should have like an enforcement mechanism. Like maybe it shouldn't just be purely voluntary. And he thinks that's treasonous and disloyal. It would de- it would destroy the independence of the judiciary if the judges couldn't be bought off by billionaires. I trust him that he thinks that from his point of view, that the judiciary they want would be destroyed. One that gets in there is brought on their ideologues, they're brought on as young as possible to sit there for literally decades being bought off by billionaires and then delivering for those same billionaires. I do think that that sort of judiciary could be destroyed with an actual ethics code that had an enforcement mechanism. But I think from our point of view, I think he's he's overselling it just a little bit. And by the way, Katanji Brown Jackson also says that she's open to an enforcement Supreme Court ethics code. Well, they're both for it, so but they're not doing it. 
Somebody must be against it. I don't know who's Sharon, but some of these justices don't want the ethics code to actually count for anything. What do you think? Yeah, Clarence Thomas, of course, and his cronies. This is so sad to me that we can't just agree on some of the simpler things. You shouldn't take money and then decide the cases for the people or the groups that they're representing are from. I just that's so basic and so simple. And to prove that they're celebrating this, they look how gleefully Shackleford, you know, he's reading this letter like, they like us, they like us. And the, to preserve the court, to preserve this cronyism, this, um, this taking of the court so that the rest of us won't have a shot and can't win as they overturn things. And legal scholars across the world are scratching their heads saying, but that doesn't make any sense. It's without precedence. It's just, it doesn't add up. It's bad for America. It's just so sad to me that we're playing this game. You won. You took the court. Just say the quiet part out loud already and stop this nonsense with us. Yeah. I mean, the issue they have, at least in their public facing commentary, is the same issue that right wing media has, which is they have a very clear point. Like there's a reason they're there, and it's to deliver for the wealthiest people in the country. But you, if you just say what you're doing, you're not going to get a big audience. Not a lot of people are going to sign on for that. So you got to come up with something else. So the right in the media, they focus on trans kids or whatever, and they pretend that, that that's what Republicans are getting in office for. Um, on in this case, Shackelford has to say they're they're de- they're destroying the independence. Yes, insulating justices from the financial interests of billionaires destroys their independence. Whereas allowing them to take millions of dollars from the richest people of the country makes them independent. Now, this is the sort of thing where if you actually had to sit down and explain what you mean, it would make no sense. But you put out a like a press release or something to cover for this terrible news that makes you look terrible. And maybe in that form, it looks better, especially when right wing media will pick it up and run with it because they're serving the same masters that you are. And so anyway, I want to thank Ginny Thomas. Not for much in her life, but for constantly shedding light on how utterly corrupt the Supreme Court is. And because she's such a dumb donkey, she she's so obvious with it. Like most of them, they just talk at fancy galas and stuff. But she has to put stuff down on video and on text, and she just makes it look as corrupt and conspiratorial as it is. And so I appreciate her service in that area. Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.